Hickok 45 here with guess what? Martini Henry. You have asked for it many times. <laughs> we finally got one. Look at that big bullet, that big cartridge. 577 by 450. Oh, it even says on the back a little cheat sheet, right? 577 by 450. Big bullet, I tell you what, you know, big gun, big single shot. I've been looking forward to uh, share, sharing this with you, and I've really only shot one four times. And we'll go into that a little bit. Let's put this round in there. And uh, again, uh, this comes to us from Simpson Limited in Galesburg, Illinois, because they handle these kinds of things, these antique and collectible firearms. So you saw the Colt Diamond back here that they lent us. So, so we appreciate that. So that was this. So this is from Simpson Limited, who specialize in things like this. And we're just going to shoot it. And it's going to be smoky. You know why? It's black powder. Let's christen, try to christen the gong with it. <laughs> well, we're off to a good start. We hit the gong and it looks like somewhere around center area. So that's good. Sights aren't too far off, maybe. Uh, well, that's good and it's bad. If the sights are off, I have an excuse, don't I? <laughs> this is pretty cool to be able to shoot one of these. I really, uh, really relish the opportunity. And uh, don't y'all forget now, the people that help us out, like BudsGunShop.com, almost every video, you know, so check them out. And then, of course, SDI.edu, the Sonoran Desert Institute. Don't forget all that they do for us. And uh, if you're looking for some coursework, you know, uh, in gunsmithing, you can get certified there. You can get a degree, a, an associate's degree in firearms technology. So uh, check them out at SDI.edu. And we're not firing federal ammo today because I don't know why they don't load this cartridge in black powder, but they don't. But you know they help us a lot, federal premium, and of course we appreciate them uh, every day. Let's see. Uh, you know what? I better pull that back out. We're losing our uh, cleaning rod here a little bit. I'll just take it out if we need to. All right, put that round back in. And let's hit the gong again. That felt good. <laughs> I mean, that's all I see. This thing was made in 1888. I'll let my relatives in Kentucky figure out how old that is. But uh, that's been around a while. Looks to me like almost 100 years. Let's just take the cleaning rod out. Uh, just to be safe, I'll lay it up here. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess safe. We don't want to mess it up. This is not my gun. Okay. Belongs to Simpson uh, Unlimited or Limited, and uh, we just have it on loan. Oh man, this is pretty neat. This is the British single shot. You know, it was their. Let me get this right now. It was their first single shot or first uh, breech loading metallic cartridge firearm designed to be that okay from the ground up you know the martini henry they uh, they had the snyder the snyder infield before that but it was kind of a remake of the uh what the p53 the uh muzzle loader just like we did in a in the united states back in the day well why don't we try buffalo you want to <laughs> i think i might have gone a little bit low or something we'll try one more at him i don't want to lose this brass Expensive stuff. I'm saving it for somebody I know that loads it. One more on the buffalo. <laughs> that cartridge knocked him over, didn't it? Knocked him over. I tell you what. Uh, what a. I, you know, I've been around shooting a long time, and that is just a very interesting cartridge. I, I don't think I've ever fired anything like that. It's even a little bit longer than the 4570, just a, a little bit, the cartridge is. And holds a little more powder than the, the 4570, I read. So uh, it's a little more power because it has more powder, right? So let's shoot one more down here and I'll take it up there and lay it around so you can take a, maybe a closer look at it. All right, let's make sure, you know what, you know that Ram, I just saw him s stickering at me over there. There I am, assigning him a gender, but I saw him snicker. 
It's actually a sheep, I guess. All right. Yeah, he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> we knocked him off his feet. We sure did. <laughs> yep, the Martini Henry. What a jewel. What a jewel. Ouch, that's some hot brass. And we're glad to, to be able to bring it to you. And before we, let's see, I've got one more shot I need to take because I just think I saw a werewolf running across the range over there. And look what I've got. A silver, oh, it's too big, John. Too big a caliber. <laughs> Sorry, we'll have to try that later. Werewolf is safe, okay? Yeah, this is actually a pure silver bullet. And I load these. I have a lot of these. I just load them in all chamberings. And I just happen to have the wrong chambering here today. But I just think it's, it's, it's good to shoot silver bullets sometimes. No, that was a joke. And I know most of you fell for it, right? No, this is actually, this is pure silver. And uh, it's made by Atmex. We want to welcome Atmex, the uh, American Precious Metal Exchange, uh, to the Hickok 45 compound as a supporter, a new supporter of ours. And we want to really welcome them. We appreciate it. Got some things on the table here. In case you're not familiar with them, I know a lot of you are. Uh, they, they are the largest uh, retail online dealer in uh, precious metals. And they've got everything you can imagine. I think it's 15,000 different types of coins and items, jewelry. Here you got a gold coin, old, old silver dollars, uh, American silver eagles. We've got gold bars. These are just little ones. Hey, it says Atmex on it. Yeah, but at Atmex.com, okay, is the, the outfit. And we got a silver dollar there and all different sorts of things. that they, they have everything. Go to their site. There's a link in our description to follow. But Atmex.com, uh, most of you know about them if you've ordered that. John and I have ordered from them from time to time for months and months and, uh, and have had Great luck. Well, it's not luck. It's just they do a good job. So, like I say, they're the largest online dealer and uh, do a really, really good job. So we want to welcome them. Uh, you know, it's just great that we have the support we have. It enables us to do a lot of things that we couldn't do otherwise. So, anyway, back to the rifle. This is a cool one. And uh, I think I might have to look. I think I lost a couple of those cases. There's one there. Okay. So... Yes, let me get a couple of these rounds out here. For the <laughs> look at them, beautiful, aren't they? And those are black powder. Uh, speaking of being able to do things that we'd like to do, being able to get our hands on one of these, and also being able to order the ammo. I mentioned this in Shooting the Breeze. Uh, these are $5 a round, okay? They're black powder. And I don't know why, but you can't buy them in bulk packs at Walmart, right? Or Target or anywhere. <laughs> So uh, you just got to pay for it unless you load these yourself and then still it's expensive. But they're kind of unusual round, not very common. And it's great to, to order up a couple of boxes. I ordered two boxes of them. Okay, do the math on that. $200 a box of, of 20. You know, so, so got some in, got a rifle, and want to just let you know if you're not familiar with the Martini Henry, and I'll try not to prolong it. You know how I am when I get with historical firearms, and don't don't be afraid because I got all these other guns on the table. Mostly, we're just going to look at this and shoot this. Um, uh, but the reason I have, and I'll go ahead with that. The reason I have the old Enfield on the on the table this is an original, you know, used in the Civil War, uh, is the fact that just like in America. They started as they're trying to get into cartridges and get away from the muzzle loaders like this. This is very similar to the Springfield 1861, right? And you know what we did with those? Uh, right out of the late 1860s and 1870, whenever, before the trapdoor Springfield in 1873, we were cutting out the breech on these babies, putting a hinge on it, and, you know, lifting it up and putting a cartridge in there, putting it back down and shooting it. Okay, uh, kind of a crude version of the later to arrive Trapdoor Springfield, which we have right here. You know, this is a little smoother because it was made that way, you know, opened up and everything. So it wasn't carved out of a muzzle loader. That's what it evolved into. That's in America. And, okay, well, the, the British did the, a similar thing with theirs, except they made a different kind of trapdoor. Theirs opened uh, kind of that way to the right. I saw one at a gun show in Memphis, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of neat. And I uh, opened it up and messed with it, you know, because I've just been studying about it. The Snyder Enfield, it's called. And you open it up that way, 
and you put the cartridge in there, close it up, and you fire the single shot. Okay, and uh, pretty cool, Snyder Snyder infield. The the difference with the cartridge was like this, except it was straight wall. It didn't neck down like this. Okay, and when they went to this cartridge for the uh, Martini Henry, they necked it down to a 45 caliber. Basically, it was paper patched and all that and the first versions of it had a really thin foil like uh, uh, brass and they looked wrinkled looked like you needed to straighten them out if you've seen a picture of those and they would have trouble with them sticking in the chamber in fact that famous uh, movie Zulu you know and, and that was actually based on an actual uh, battle you know they had a lot of trouble uh, early on with those chambers with the round sticking in the chamber and you got some 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 people killed that otherwise might not have been killed I guess but they went to uh, a drawn brass like this later, and they didn't have that kind of trouble. Just like we did with, with ours. We had trouble with those copper cases, those early ones, 4570s. And they would stick in the chamber of, of the trapdoor Springfield lots of times. You know, a lot of Custer's men had trouble with that, Battle of Bighorn and everything. Uh, but, and other places, until we went to brass. So, a yeah, little history you didn't care about, but I thought I'd let you know. So the Henry, pretty cool Martini Henry. Uh, I think it's, it's based uh, originally on the uh, the Peabody, Henry Peabody, the, the dropping block action. But a fellow, I think a Swiss designer named, guess what, Martini, took it a little further. And he and, I think it's Alexander Henry, uh, who was responsible for the rifling and everything. So anyway, they, they put together this rifle, and this is it, around 1871. I think it was finished up and issued. 1871 a little bit ahead of our trapdoor Springfield maybe and it was chambered in this this is what they were firing again other than being a paper patch bullet and being kind of a weird uh, uh, type of brass so uh, anyway and it's a single shot hey did you notice that but it's different isn't it you don't have an exposed hammer or anything and uh, it loads pretty well it's fairly quick to use if you have your ammo handy you can just go ahead and fire it and why don't we do that some more you want to I've got plenty of ammo in my pocket. And again, it's only $5 a round. So, <laughs> let's shoot the thing. Uh, we've already uh, killed some game for the meal later, right? So, uh, maybe we need to work on something else here. Let's pop one in and shoot that target one time. Wee doggies. <laughs> Man, what a marksman. Hit the bullseye at this long range. I'll put this brass where I can find it. One thing about gigantic brass, it's not hard to find. And you know what? I brought out a large pot just for the occasion. <laughs> put a hole in it. And let's see how it is for bowling. I don't know if any of the British uh, soldiers use them for bowling, but I'm going to. Woo! <laughs> don't you love black powder? Don't you love it? Oh, I'm not sure what else to shoot, uh, but I don't know, I could shoot a bucket. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> we killed it. Sorry, Old Depot. Oh, bam, 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 bam. Sorry, I don't have <laughs> multiple rounds to, to shoot here. Yeah, we did it, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, black powder, you got to love it, even when it's in a cartridge. Even when it's in a cartridge. I'll close her up and pull the trigger we have not shot a two liter yet we should be ashamed of ourselves you know what i see i don't know if i could do it or not it just occurred sorry john trying to get in position i see if i stand tall enough i'm going to try to get both those two liters uh let's see i don't know i don't want to shoot the steel but i'm going to try it hey i got them i am so proud of myself I almost didn't have room to do it. I didn't want to touch that steel that close. You know, that close. That's a, the issue. So here we are firing a, a firearm again that was made in the 1800s, 1888. Uh, having fun with it, uh, sharing some history. You know, it doesn't get a lot better than this. And these things were made, speaking of history, for I think about, well, through 89, I believe, about around 71 through around 89. But they were used after that. You know, you get enough of them. You don't have to continue making them necessarily. And other guns were being developed. I think it wasn't really retired as a, an official 
officially adopted firearm or whatever until around 1904. Some of you know more about them than I do, uh, but somewhere in that ballpark. However, like so many firearms, bolt actions or otherwise, they're used somewhere, you know, yesterday probably, you know, in battle. It really, truthfully, I read that, uh, where was it? Well, in Afghanistan, they were used in the, I think in the 80s, 1980s even, they found some that were being used. There's all kinds of firearms turn up in Afghanistan. But uh, you just never know around the world because, you know, the British Empire uh, spread itself out, right? And so these things were all over the planet. And uh, you've seen them in movies. Like I say, Zulu is one of the most famous movies uh, where, you know, you know, these things are in constant use, right? I don't know, you might use one to deer hunt. They've been used a lot for competition and hunting, of course. You know, single shot, you know, a big powerful single shot is obviously great for hunting or, or competition. Uh, let's try that Kentucky 2 liter. Boom. Yeah, those sights are right on. I could go to battle with this thing. And let's do that. Let's go to battle with that uh, cinder block. I knew what it was called. Through it. It's a round and a half. Be sure not to step on that. Uh, let's see, the, the bullets are 485 grains, I think. That was a standard. These might be 480, 485. But uh, a heavy bullet with that big case and the neck down, you, you kind of have a the idea it's not as big uh, as 45, 70, or maybe something else because that base of that case is gigantic. But it's actually a 45. A bullet weighing almost 500 grains it doesn't get much bigger than that, you know, so Pretty nice pretty nice. <laughs> and again, it's only five dollars a shot. Wow a bargain a bargain I might not shoot everything here. Uh, I think I think I need to uh, I'd see to smoke that pot a little bit better Look at that. There we go Put a little more lead in him Now this one I think had a, a stock replaced uh, and I'm not a, you know, an expert enough to, to know what, uh, how to tell that. But, uh, you know, this matches up. They had a shorter lever on them at first. And then they went to a longer lever, which helped them, you know, extract the cases more easily. And this is one of the longer ones, the Mark IV. And, uh, you know, all kinds of markings and, you know, proof marks, probably import marks and everything else on it. You see the crowns and, of course, you saw on the side you know, the infield and the date, 1888. So, that's just pretty neat having a farm like this that uh, has seen, uh, well, it has uh, experienced, you know, so much history, I guess. It's been a part of a lot of history. And let me, let me soak that barrel a little bit. I just want to make sure we're not getting that black powder setting up on us, even though the sun's in. And so it shouldn't be a big problem. And that's why I have this this out here. I've got a snake out here, and I'm also going to run a just a patch through it. I haven't noticed any issues with it, but uh, it's always good to do this. Just run a patch, and just in case you didn't believe me, look how filthy that is. Black powder, black powder. I'll pick that up later. That's up my beautiful Brazilian hide here. And one thing about black powder is uh, it, 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 everything gets hotter. The barrel does, and I can feel that uh, than with just normal, normal smokeless powder. All right, let's shoot a couple more times. And uh, we don't want to wear this baby out, do we? It's <laughs> it has served, uh, I'm sure, a lot of people quite well. Uh, let's see. Why don't we throw another one over there at that ram on the right? Can't see him too well. But that'll give me an excuse for missing, right? Got another one in my pocket. Oh man, I forget every time I stick one in there, it's five dollars. I heard that one. I heard that beautiful sound 
All right, one more shot. What do you want me to shoot? I'm listening. Let me shoot. Two liter? The red two liter, you reckon? Yeah, since it's the biggest smart elk and it's right here, we might as well. Okay. Martini Henry versus two liter. <laughs> yeah, we smoked him. Literally, we smoked him. That <laughs> big old case. That's amazing. Yeah, so uh, anyway, the Martini Henry is an interesting piece of history. We may do a little more uh, comparing it with the trap door. You might like to see uh, more, a, a closer comparison, some things for, especially people who are not familiar with the trap door and the operation uh, that much. So before we send it back, but uh, it, this is pretty cool. What other uh, irrelevant facts that I uh, not share with you? Like I said, it's been in, in use all through the 20th century by somebody probably hunting or competition and even in combat uh, still occasionally. It was chambered in this cartridge. It was chambered later in 303 British and then uh, a couple other cartridges. There was a carbine version of it, I think 1877. I think there were actually two or three different types of carbine versions of it, shorter versions of it. There were copies of it. There was some outfit that made a lot of copies of it. Uh, but you know, you, you can study all that yourself if you're interested in this this firearm. But the, the cool thing is, it's uh, it, it is a big piece of history, British history especially, and world history. Okay, this I can't believe we're just now getting a hold of one, but it was used for so long, uh, you know, by by the British, you know, around the, the globe, and just showed up everywhere. Kind of like a well, it was like a Mauser, but you know. The, the Mausers is ubiquitous everywhere, very variations of it. So whenever you're watching an old, a movie uh, set, whatever, in 1880s, 90s, 1910 or something, and a bunch of rebels or ragtag outfit or whatever, I always try to identify what firearms they have. Sometimes it's not easy if they've been Hollywooded up, but it, but it's, it is interesting. Sometimes you'll see someone carrying one of these, you know, whatever they get put together. And uh, it's fairly distinctive looking, you know, even from the side, it, it just has a different look about it, doesn't it? The old Martini Henry, pretty cool. Pretty interesting rifle and quite a piece of history. Really glad to, to bring it to you today. And uh, from a selfish standpoint, of course, I'm very happy to, to be able to shoot one with you know, original chambering and black powder cartridges. And I don't care what they cost, it was fun. Life is good. Hey, go along. Oh, hey, just throwing a little frisbee here on the range. While you're here, I want to remind you to check us out in some other places on the internet and our friends over at Talon Grips. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter under Hickok45 and on Instagram under The Real Hickok45 and John underscore Hickok45. Also, go to bunkerbranding.com for our t shirts, hats, patches, and stickers. So, we appreciate, of course, the support from Talon Grips. Go to talongungrips.com. They make all sorts of different textured grips for handguns and rifles. Uh, Dad's been using them for a lot of years. They do great work, and we're happy to have them on board, so please check them out, talongungrips.com. And then also, don't forget, we have videos on Gun Streamer now. So if you're watching them over there, you probably already know about it, but if you're not, you might not. So maybe check that out, gunstreamer.com. And... Uh, Hey, there's some more videos being recommended to you that you should probably be watching right now, so I'll let you go. Thanks.